Hello, my name is Barry Tillman, and I'm here at the North Florida REC in Mariana. And we're standing in front of one of our variety trials, and this one actually is one that is not irrigated. So this has been rain-fed all year. Um, we've had plenty of rain, so it looks nice and lush. Um, but uh, our other irrigated test has already been dug and, and harvested. So I'm standing here beside Tough Runner 297 and Tough Runner 511, two varieties that, um, that have um, uh, been released for a few years and uh, just talk a little bit about them in comparison to O6G and some differences as well. Uh, as you know, every variety is a little bit different and those differences mean that we really can't manage them identically to each other. So we need to understand the strengths and weaknesses of each variety and manage according to the weaknesses so that we can take advantage of their strengths. So what is a, a, a strength of 297? Well, it has very good yield potential. It has very good grade. And that's going to be your opportunity, is to maximize the yield and grade for those varieties. So uh, what are some weaknesses that you, could, that you need to know about varieties? Well, it has a little more susceptibility to late leaf spot, as does the 511. But it is a little bit better on white mold. So if you have to manage one disease or the other, you're better off to spend your money managing leaf spot with these two varieties because they're a little bit better on white mold resistance. Now they have a little bit larger vine. You can see here they, they can get quite tall. So I would also not suggest managing them in such a way to grow more vine. Whereas the common variety we grow today, Georgia 6G, has a little bit smaller vines. So a lot of growers will fer fertilize more or try to promote vine growth to get the canopy to cover sooner. You don't need to do that with 297 or 511. They're going to produce plenty of vine regardless. So you might even save a little bit of money there on your fertilizer if you're trying to fertilize or promote vine growth with other products. So one thing to, to note there. Um, they also have pretty good seed vigor. Their seed size is large, like O6G. So you're going to have uh, roughly the same seeding costs. That's not going to be true with some of the other varieties I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, that have smaller seeds. So that's another advantage of, the, of some of the newer varieties that have smaller seed. You wouldn't need as much um, seed per acre, pounds per acre, to get the same plant stand. So I'm standing here by two other varieties, the Georgia 12Y and the Flow Run 331. And these two varieties are two of the most disease tolerant that we have. Uh, if you look at the Peanut RX, and I have a copy here of the variety part of the Peanut RX. And just so you know, that's the best place to find the relative tolerance of varieties um, on average across all of our growing area in the southeast is this Peanut RX uh, data. Now 12Y has really good um, white mold and spotted wilt resistance and, um, and it is it's a candidate you could use for planting early if you wanted to, to have a, a situation where you knew you're going to have higher risk for spotted wilt that would be a good candidate to, to plant. I didn't mention the spotted wilt risk of the other two varieties, the 297 and 511. The 297 is very good. The 511 is a little bit more susceptible, so it would not be a candidate to plant early, but the 297 uh, would be a candidate you could plant a little as long as you're doing all the other risk factors well. And those would be planting a good seeding density, planting um, uh, twin rows, and using thymet in furrow. Those would be really important things to, to do if you're planting any variety early, but especially one that's a little more susceptible. Um, the 331 here is, is also a large vine variety, and, and both of these are, both the 12Y and the 331. So again, I would not suggest promoting vine growth with these varieties, but instead doing things that would try to restrict vine growth, because one, that excessive vine growth is going to create a, a canopy that's going to cause more problems with disease, especially leaf spot. It's also going to cause potential digging problems if there's so many vines they don't invert well. Or when you come to harvest that and there's a lot of vines going through the combine, you may have to slow your combine speed down in, in picking, which is also a, a, a negative. But you can manage these varieties so that um, the picking and digging would go well as long as you don't um, have too much excessive vine growth. Now on the leaf spot side of things, the, the 331 is a little more susceptible than the 12Y. They both have um, good yield potential, very good yield potential in these more difficult situations. So I would say they both fit well in, in general into areas where disease is more problematic and more prone, but there are some subtle differences. I mentioned seed size a minute ago, and these are two varieties that have smaller seed size. These are gonna be on the neighborhood of 550 or 650 seed per pound, whereas the other ones we looked at along with O6G the 297 and 511 are going to be more in the neighborhood of 550 uh, seed per pound. So that makes a difference when you're buying seed by the pound 
but you're planting the seed by the number of seed per foot of row. So you could save as much as, in, the, in this case, maybe 10 to $15 per acre in planting costs if you planted the smaller seed varieties like this at the same seed density as you do 06G or some of the larger seed varieties. So um, just to summarize on the diseases, use the Peanut RX. You can find it on our website. If you go to the Florida Peanut Team, uh, if you search that, you'll find the Florida Peanut Team and it has the Peanut RX there. There's also a nice little interactive chart um, called the Peanut RX uh, Interactive and it will allow you to pick and choose what variety you're going to grow and all the different management strategies you're going to use and, and give you an idea of what the risk is for a disease, at least for white mold spotted wilt and leaf spot. So I encourage you to look up those resources on, our, on the web uh, as well as the variety test data that's there called, and it's on the Florida Peanut Team website. So I'm here now by another variety called Tiffin V High OL. I wanted to, to just explain about nematode resistance. There are three nematode resistant varieties available. This is one of them. This is the newest one. The other two is, are Tifgard and Fort Georgia 14N. So if you have a problem with nematodes, this is one of the very best tools you have to manage a nematode problem. Um, in the same price that you would buy regular seed for of any other variety, you can buy a resistant variety that would, that would really help you manage the disease uh, or the, the nematodes instead of having to use some more expensive chemical control measures like our, that are out there. The TIF MV, um, we've been testing it for several years. It looks very good, good, very good yield potential, good grades. It's also a large seeded peanut, so you're going to pay a little bit more in terms of seed cost, but not that much more than 06G. Um, but I would say this is a great alternative for you to look at if, you're, if you have nematode problems. Um, there's, there, it's in various stages of seed multiplication, so the seed availability may be a bit limited, but I think it, it will be um, uh, generally available in 2021 and beyond.